Hey friends, back with Malika Chopra and her new book, Buddha and the Rose, teaching young people how to start meditating and how important it is to be connected to the universe and to nature. We talk about how to survive the carpool lanes, friends, and uh, the mom carpool lanes, I guess is what I should be specifying, right, Malika? Yes, but uh, we also (laughs) share lots of tips. Um, So breathing techniques, uh, inspiration, and how to connect to ourselves and the rest of the world. Yeah, I got some new tools that I am definitely applying in my life and you will want to apply to yours. So don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll be right back. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote for today Through her imagination and state of calm, she bore witness to a unique world only visible to us when we're open to it. That is from Malika Chopra. And I believe, if I'm correct, Kelsey, because I read the book, it's from her new book, Buddha and the Rose, That's right? That's right. That's right. Hey, hey, hey. That's so cool. She wrote another children's book, Heel Squad. What up? We are back. I'm back here in Connecticut on the East Coast uh, side of things. Today we have the brilliant daughter of Deepak Chopra, Malika Chopra is here to talk about her new book, Buddha and the Rose, all about our powerful connection with nature and the universe, how we can learn from nature and so much more. Obviously, it is a children's book. I read it really quickly. It's beautiful. Do you love it? (laughs) I love it. Uh, And I love people teaching mindfulness to kids. You know, when you start to see kids that are meditators, oh my Lord, I met some at the Joe Dispenza event. And they're just so far ahead of everybody else. And it's really, really beautiful to see. And they're going into schools now and they're teaching kids, young kids, how to meditate. And that's amazing. like things are shifting and changing. I mean, you know, for me, things are shifting and changing as an adult. There's no reason why it wouldn't happen for kids. Imagine growing up with that yeah. in your mind, right? Well, I know, remember Marianne DeMarco always talks about how her mom used to make her meditate as a kid. And that's when she like really kind of honed in on her psychic abilities. And I'm like, mm-hmm. look, imagine and when you have that like open mind and possibility, like, dang. So I love that they're teaching that to kids. Yeah. Because it's just I like- also think um, it's really helped me be alone better, if that makes any sense. It does. Yeah, it does. Um, you're okay never, sitting with your thoughts. I'm, I'm really okay. By the way, I'm like kind of scarily okay being alone now. <laughs> whereas before, um, I felt I was scared of being alone security wise. I was scared of being alone in general. I was scared of losing the people I love, which I still don't want to lose anyone I love, but I'm getting more and more comfortable with me and and I didn't know I was uncomfortable with me until I got comfortable with me. <laughs> oh, interesting. That makes sense though. Yeah. So these meditations are, I mean, my God, it's more than meditations. Kevin keeps saying that. So we've been talking to Dr. Joe about coming up with what the new word or the line is that will really encapsulate what his work does and how transformative it is for you. I love it though. I think that like being alone is one of the most powerful things like being okay with being alone it it really is it's like and I've kind of learned that with my with now living alone I never really realized like you just said Maria I was like oh wait maybe I'm like not okay being alone now I am it's taking me it's (laughs) taking me time to get there and now I like really truly enjoy it and need it but I didn't realize Mm -hmm. that I wasn't okay not being alone until I was forced to be alone and now I'm like oh wow okay yeah it's it's and I'm never alone and I've never been alone yeah so I mean that's the the crazy thing is I've always had people living with us like Kevin and I have never been alone never (laughs) everyone's always yeah like we've had like a halfway house everyone's always living there and um and so for me, even like right now I'm alone. I was like, oh gosh, am I going to cut Kevin out of my life now too? Cause I'm so happy being alone. <laughs> You're like Kev, actually, no. <laughs> better together, better apart. <laughs> we go back to that conversation. You're right. I just like, I love just being in peace and quiet. And I don't know. It's just been so, so nice to um, not feel like you need to just always have your time filled with stuff. Like I'm like, Oh, I'm going to go meditate later. 
oh, I'm going to go meditate again. I'm back to my like, let's just do it at every chance I can because it feels so good. And that's what this book is going to teach young people is that it really is special to be in the present moment, to be in nature, to be able to see the things that you would just whiz by, whether it's, you know, the way a rose folds or really taking in the sense and, and using all of your senses to feel everything. It's, it's really powerful and really cool. And, you know, I love nature. So oh yeah, the book talks Me about too. grounding too, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I can't wait I to get realized. More... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, no, I was just saying, I can't wait to get more into it with her and like to see, I always think it's fascinating when it's like, I mean, anyone writes a book, but especially a children's book. I'm like, okay, tell us more about like, I don't know, it like what what it meant to you and what it speaks to you. And I want to know if Malika, if Malika's going out and putting her feet in the ground too and in the grass oh. and grounding. And I don't know. I just think it's I'm sure. Yeah. It's so awesome. I'm sure. Well, I uh it's raining here, so I can't ground. <laughs> I realize that I've been doing so much tic tac toeing. I went from the Dr. Joe event to Nashville and then um up here. And so um, it's been raining. So I'm like, I haven't been able to get out and, and ground yet. So hopefully tomorrow will be my day, but I really am loving back here. I just, I really love it here so much. I love that. I just love to it. be love it. in the forest and then Kels, you'll die when you come here. So um, I'll let everybody know why you were going to come back here in like another week, but the furniture is almost all in. Oh um, I ordered furniture I started ordering like last year and I got most everything at front gate, which um, the stuff is so beautiful. The bedroom sets in um, just every piece, all the outdoor furniture is here. Um, and so I'm really, really just so happy waking up every day and everything is just coming together and I'm building my new office, which will be Ooh, my new spot to, to do the show from. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So we have the studio downstairs for when you're here, but when you're not here, I'm making the office downstairs. So I have my desk and my chair and I'm waiting on a few more things. And then I'm going to make my better together background. Um, I took my first conference call in there today. It felt so nice. Ooh, I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You'll be really surprised when you come in. I can't it's wait to see a it. completely different place. Um, but Soon enough, I'll I'll unveil it all on Instagram and you guys will see. In the meantime, Kelsey and I are going to be traveling back this way. Um, I'm going to come home for a minute and then come back with Kelsey. We're going to New York for um, a Macy's live event. So as part of our partnership with Macy's here at Better Together, I'm going to uh, not host, but I'm going to be a special guest on Macy's Live. And I've curated some back to work looks so it's like back to school, but back to work. Usually you need to freshen up your, your work wardrobe a little bit, unless you're doing the Zoom top thing. Yeah, right. <laughs> Sweats down below, <laughs> top above. The but best. I'll tell you, that wear is off, right? Like yeah. that was fun at first. But I know for my conference call today, I wanted to kind of like dress up a little because it gives you an energy, right? You know, it's like finding your like powerful self and finding your your confidence and all of that. Sometimes you have to dress the part. It's no different than an actor, right? If I'm in a movie, I'm dressing the part Absolutely. so that I can feel the part. Mm -hmm. um, so Macy's and I will be doing this live event. I'll be sharing some really cool kind of alternative work back to work outfits. So it's not that stereotypical pantsuit look. Um, and Kelsey's coming along as well. Yes, I am. And, um, and so, uh, we're going to do a little meet and greet there. They're choosing some of their top customers that are doing a meet and greet. So, um, we'll put a link or any information we have in the summary of this episode. So you guys can at least watch it and maybe get inspired. It's a shoppable event. So you'll be able to get things right away. Um, if you haven't checked out our Macy's.com backslash better together page, you know, I have my curated looks there already. I added new ones that you guys are going to love. Cowboy boots are very in right now. So oh. I picked some cool cowboy boots. Oh, I'm excited to see those. Yeah. You have a pair, don't you? No, I have some that kind of look cowboy -y. They're kind of like a mix of, uh, you know, like a normal boot and cowboy, but I want like a real cowboy boot. 
I got some really cute ones on there okay. that are affordable. Okay. So, um, so break out the cowboy boots and the skirts. Cause it's definitely a thing right now. Um, and yeah, it's going to be fun. Then we're going to, okay. So then Kelsey, we're going to train back to Connecticut and my dad's going to take us to apple picking and he doesn't know this, but I'm putting <laughs> a little secret reunion together for him. Oh, So yeah, he's, he's been, he's great. He's doing great. And, um, and all of that, but you know, he has been having his like sad moments, of course. you know, about my mom. So, uh, I'm having some of the, um, people we worked with growing up at the channel, like a little reunion. Oh my gosh. Um, so the channel, everybody was Boston's biggest rock club. It was massive. And we were the janitors there. We were the maintenance people. We cleaned them every day. So I would clean up after the B-52s or Roy Orbison or whoever was performing. The new kids on the block performed their two ones. And so when I was 13, uh, it shut down. There was a lot of like mob stuff that went on. And we were talking all about these mob stories. And I forgot how many bodies were oh found gosh. and my dad would <laughs> stumble upon, Ooh. which was wild. Cause my brother was like, well, you don't remember the guy they pulled out of the water. So that the, the club was on the water. There was like a balcony. And I said, no. And then I, the guy's face flashed in my head because I, I looked mm. outside right as they were trying to pull him up. And as he was very like distorted, cause he had drowned. Um, there were some crazy stories, but oh my gosh. anyway, our whole childhood was there. And my dad, um, you know, my dad's very close. The owners were Greek. And so I'm going to get them all together and we're going to have a little barbecue with everybody. That's so, so cute. Surprised. He's going to be so yeah. excited. I love yeah, that. So that'll be nice. And then we go back to La La Land. Hopefully the heat waves will have ended by then. Please God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, friends, Malika is uh, a longtime friend of the show. She's a wellness expert speaker. She's taught meditation to thousands of people. She's currently a mindfulness consultant for an animated series on Apple TV. But today she's here to discuss her new children's book, like I said, Buddha and the Rose. It's, uh, it's a really beautiful story about connection with the natural world and the universe. And I think she's going to help remind us adults today how to connect with nature and why it is important. Um, Malika, the book is great. I was telling um, telling the Heal Squad that, especially coming off of a meditation event, I did see some young people that were getting into it. And um, it's so beautiful to see the difference in, in young people who've already found it um, and thinking of what potential lies in that kind of, um, person in their future. Yeah, no, it's amazing. And more and more kids now are exposed to all of this content. So it's really, it's special and it's amazing to see, because as you know, when we grew up, this was kind of woo woo crazy. <laughs> yeah. Rich doctor stuff. So it's great. I'm sure that was heightened for you with your dad. Were you rebelling against it at first? You know, you know, my brother. Um, so we both grew up in a very normal Boston community, um, very much an immigrant community. And so when my dad started his journey, I was about nine, Gotham was about six. And it was very slow. There was no like massive change in our life. Um, but what did change was my dad in his own healing became more present in our family life. And so that was really nice for me and my brother, because before my dad kind of wasn't around and he was busy and he drank a lot and um, just was unhappy. And so when he was more present to Gotham and I just had like a closer family. So it didn't become rebellious more. It was like, oh, my God, this is really nice and healing for our family. Our mom um, was very diligent about her meditation practice so when we came home from school she purposely I realize now as a parent but she was purposely role modeling for us wow uh, and so it really became actually a bonding experience not a rebellious one at all so it was special wow. that's so cool I love that you got to see that transition in your dad and what the benefits were of it because if if you hadn't maybe it would have been something that you would have rebelled against 
Yeah, no, because before, like, my dad was busy, he was never around, and then suddenly he was around, and we got to travel more and meet interesting people, but and suddenly he'd be like, so what grade are you in? Like, he was just much more aware of our lives, and I think my parents' relationship was happier. So overall, um, my dad discovering meditation, and of course, then my mom started, then my dad's brother started, and their family, then my mom's sister, the entire Indian community within a week had started. And so it was really this like community journey, um, which just was more bonding than anything else. It was lovely. What are the benefits you've seen of meditation in your own personal life? So in my personal life, I started when I was nine. I just turned 51, crazy. So I am like literally um, decades of this practice. I will say, um, and I'm irregular. So I like to actually share with people, like I'm not the person who's meditated twice a day, 20 minutes since I was nine years old. Like I have sometimes do it once a day. I've gone years where I didn't meditate at all. Then I rediscover it when I need the practice again. Um, And so, you know, in my 40s was when I really rediscovered it and became, uh, you know, regular in my meditation practice. And what I do, because I have a busy life, is I try to find 20 minutes once a day um, for myself with the meditation practice. But so in a lifelong journey, what meditation has done is it's given me um, tools for self-regulation. So I know that when I'm in a stressful moment, I know how to kind of breathe and stop and kind of shift from a fight flight response um, to situations to a more mindful response, which I think uh, helps with underlying anxiety. Um, I've also uh, meditation for me personally has really helped with self-reflection. So, you know, we ask these questions of who am I, what do I want, what am I grateful for, how can I serve? And so those um, with my meditation practice, the self-reflection has really helped me just live a life that's a more purposeful, I feel. Um, and then it just helps, honestly, like with the everyday, like, you know, as we all are busy people, we're living in stressful times. And for me to just have like my space. Um, my mental space where I know I can tap into just a sense of quiet gives me an anchoring for everything else that happens. Yeah. I feel like there's such a benefit, first of all, to starting your day like that. But then if you're not disciplined enough to start your day that way, stopping it somewhere like at two, (laughs) at two o'clock, there's been enough built up that you can just settle down and then start. It's like a restart for the rest of your day. Um, When you talk about self-regulating, is it something that you learned specifically or something that you just became aware of because of the meditations you were able to be more self-regulating? Yeah. So I, because I've been meditating my whole life, I think I have um, a, a base set where I'm pretty aware of my body and my thoughts. That being said, um, I wrote a book called Just Breathe for eight to 12 year olds um, because I wanted to share like what I learned at that age. And what we see is that honestly, just taking a deep breath in and out in any moment help you relax, you know, and then we can extend that to, you know, I often do with kids using the fingers in and out, in and out. There's so many exercises or grounding yourself or saying affirmations. And so I think um, at these practices, there's a, there's the systemic where you have a regular practice, but there is also just the power of taking a deep breath. There's a power of like when you're in a stressful situation saying, oh, my God, where am I feeling that in my body? My butterflies in my stomach. Kids are really good at expressing this. So, you know, which is why I love working with kids. But um, feeling in your body the sadness of a heartbreak or the the butterflies in your stomach or kids often have stomach aches. Um, We can learn from kids um, the sweatiness of our palms. So in those situations, having tools that help us self-regulate in that particular moment can be really powerful as well. And what that does is it actually shifts us biologically from like the the racing heart, the sweaty palms, the anxiety that um, a panic attack or something like that to really 
anchoring yourself, taking a breath, and then being able to deal with any situation because life is hard. Like life, we're always going to be having obstacles. This is not about having only a positive life and always being happy and joyful. Like life is messy. Um, it's messy for kids too. And so uh, just having these tools, I think, help. That's a really great point. It's not about having just like this perfect idyllic life. We're going to have problems. We need to learn how to work with them and the, have the tools ready for them. So I like the um, the finger thing. Will you teach us a few of the things you teach kids? Because if it's good enough for the kids, it's good enough for us. And we need all the tips we can get. Absolutely. So I'll do um, two very simple exercises. We did the deep breath. But yeah, with the finger is really simple. Put your thumb to your pinky and breathe in. Go to your ring finger, breathe out. Your middle finger, breathe in. And your pointer finger, breathe out. Oh my God, I love this. This feels so good. And you're having to breathe through your nose and out your mouth. I think that's really important because it it activates the sympathetic nervous system, right? Or parasympathetic yes. nervous system. Yes. And again, you can, but like one of the things I teach when I teach is don't be obsessed with doing it right. Do what feels comfortable with you. So yes, you can breathe in through your mouth, in through your nose, out through your mouth. But even just taking those two breaths, you, we can see as we're sitting here helps. Um, yeah. and, and oh, another one, I love, love, love this. I'm going to use this all the time. What a great, because you can do it in the car. I like doing things in the car. It's funny. And I think we need it in the car a lot. <laughs> I meditate a lot in the car. I used to when I was, because I, you know, for years when my kids, I was driving my kids to school in carpool line, one sits in carpool line a long time. Um, so I used to do uh, my meditation there. Um, but there's another one um, that I'd love to share with you, which I kind of started sharing during the pandemic because I felt like people were so um, disoriented and where they were and just feeling like the uncertainty of everything. And, and this evolved into another one of my children's books called My Body is a Rainbow. But for this one, just put your feet on the ground and we're gonna take three breaths this time. So put your attention on your feet and feel the stability of the ground beneath you and take a deep breath in and out. And in your head, just say, I am safe. I am safe, feeling the ground beneath you. And then shift your attention to your heart. And you may find it helpful to put your hand on your heart and take a deep breath in and out. And say in your head, I am here. I am here. So actually your, your physical body, I am here. And then you can put your attention on the top of your head and kind of imagine the space between your head and the roof above, but then the sky and the universe and the infinity of space and take a deep breath in and out and just say, I am. I am. And if your eyes are closed, you can open your eyes. Oh my God. So that's I another love. one. And these are, by the way, we're doing these, they're like one to two minutes, even less. Right. Yeah, I day. love that. I instantly like went away for a minute. <laughs> yeah. So good. You know, we need as many of these as we can get. And also, I feel like one will click with somebody and the other will click with another. Um, but what a great thing for carpool lines, like you said, or if you're at the doctor's office and you're, you have anxiety, like with the doctors or um, anytime the kettle's running hot, I always say when the kettle's running hot, stop. Cause I used to, when the kettle would run hot and I mean, like when I would just, it would be built up, but I was so stressed and I was so angry. Maybe something wasn't working my phone and you're in that state. If you, double down and keep forcing it, which is what I used to do. Nothing good is going to come. First of all, you're just going to keep making yourself more exhausted and take up so much of your energy. 
and you're probably not going to do whatever it is right. And it's not going to get fixed. So then when I, now what I say is when the kettle's running hot, take a five minute break. Everyone can take five minutes to just let it out. And one of these exercises is so great to do because you can just reset yourself and then you have a clear mind. The solution will come so much faster. And you said it actually stop. So there's an acronym stop. S is for stop what you're doing. T is for take a deep breath or take three breaths. O is observe what's happening in your body because often our body is taking on the stress and then P is proceed. So it is kind of, you can just stop in that moment and kind of take the breaths, observe your body and then proceed. And it really does make a difference. I love that. I think something you said earlier about liking working with kids a little bit more um, is because I think a lot of us over time deny, 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 deny until we can't feel anymore. So when someone says, where do you feel it in your body? You're like, I, I don't know, because we haven't been used to feeling our bodies. So observe and the stop is such an important part of it. So you can really start connecting and understanding. Yeah. Where is it hurting? Where am I feeling it? And then just kind of, you know, observing it. And, and giving it energy because it's screaming for you. Yeah, no, and that's why I, you know, so this book, Buddha and the Rose, is my fifth children's book, which is crazy. But, you know, what, I've, what I have found in the last 10 years or so, or less, five, six, seven years, is um, that when I work with kids, actually all the things that as adults we talk about, when you do it with children, they're so open and honest about everything that you get like such um, great feedback on whether something potentially could work or couldn't work. And so all of these books that I've been working on are just kind of, I love going into classrooms and like, you know, testing things out with kids and seeing, you know, they have, they make it joyful rather than serious because, mm. you know, many of us who are on this journey maybe had a trigger that got us into the journey, which maybe was more from some sort of trauma, but working with kids, what's nice is um, at least in those early things, they're just so enthusiastic and open to trying anything. And that's what I love about these, uh, just being able to share all these books and all this wisdom that I've learned both as a child, but then as a parent, because, you know, when you uh, are then managing everyday uh, stresses with your kids and trying to find your own balance and um, feeling very overwhelmed all the time, um, you know, these techniques come came back for me in a very powerful way. Yeah. I wonder with kids, if it's, if they're better doing it because they're used to being asked, how are you feeling there? You know, we're always investigating as adults, like what's going on with the child. Like, so you're always asking them and they're always having to provide feedback. I think as you become an adult, you realize what a burden you are in a sense. So it's always like, I'm fine. I'm great. We just have yeah. this like auto reply and that builds up over time. And, you know, obviously, hopefully they haven't had as much trauma that's just built and hardened at that point. Um, so they can be more open. But I wonder for you and your kids, um, how did meditation work for you and your kids? Because obviously you saw the benefits with your dad. Did they see the benefits right away with it for in your family? No. Um, so I will say that this is a really important for um, whether it's parents or teachers or aunts, uncles, you know, librarians, anyone who's trying to bring in some sort of meditation mindfulness practice into the home or the school or whatnot is, you know, kids, it's great to give them the tools. Um, and, you know, but as soon as you start to force anything, they resist. Um, and we see that in everything. So my kids learned um, how to meditate from my dad, like a mantra based meditation when they were about five. And, you know, they are. Um, and then, of course, that, you know, I do all this work. They see me meditating. So that's my tool and my anchor. Um, but I've never forced them just like my parents never forced me. So some of my like during some phases, they won't meditate. And if I keep asking them, they they roll their eyes. Um, what they will do is when my mom's in town and she asks them to meditate with her, they'll go meditate with grandma. Um, and then they don't um, resist as much. What I 
have found, though, is especially my older one who's now in college. Um, I think she's rediscovering her meditation practice. So just like for me, I was on and off and used it. Uh, she's rediscovering that. My younger one um, has found more of her practice through martial arts. She's, you know, does Taekwondo and uh, it's been more physical, um, you know, in terms of her practice. So I'm a big believer you find what works. And with kids, you don't force it. You give them tools um, and then you lead by example. So you have your own practice, whatever that may be, and they see you doing that. And that's, I think, how they learn. Yeah. And and introducing them to it is is a lot more helpful with the book, right? Because you're explaining it. <laughs> and well, what that's it what is. I love. I, I realized um, a few years ago when I was, you know, asked, getting asked to teach more in schools, there really weren't books um, for the, this age group. And one of my best friends um, wrote uh, some of the American girl books, you may know Kara Natterson. Um, and so I was with her one day and I was like, you know, we need books like this for mental health and for these mindfulness and meditation practices. And so the three books, Just Breathe, Just Feel, and Just Be You really were those. And then I, I was like, well, what about the younger ones? Um, and so that's why Buddha and the Rose um, is the second one that I'm doing for the younger kids, which is more um, of a story. Um, and it's just like a beautiful story that uh, it goes from a classic tale of when Buddha gave what they called the silent lecture, where he just sat on a dais and held a rose and didn't say anything. And so um, I decided to use that kind of tale, but I brought in a young Indian girl because I was like, we need more women in these stories. So I brought in a young girl named Sujata, who was like, um, it historically was the girl who gave him his milk when he broke his fast for enlightenment. But in this story, I just made her in the audience and just had her kind of wondering with all the other kids, what is he not saying? Like he's just sitting there with a rose. And then she has this moment of awakening, um, of joy and of bliss, which, by the way, we need so much in our world right now, where she kind of understands, you know, that the rose represents everything from, you know, the, the seed that a bird carried and dropped in the ground to it being nurtured by the sun, the stars, the moons, um, and then it growing into a flower and the rose offering honey to the bees and, you know, um, flowers at weddings and at festivals. And so this um, experience that an awakening and insight that she has, um, I'm hoping with kids helps them and adults, um, helps them realize that we are all connected um, and that we're part of something larger and bigger and you know one can take any object or you can even take yourself and be like I'm part of a much larger continuum that's part of a larger environment so I'm just feeling like that we need that a little bit more mm -hmm. in a society today where we're all feeling disconnected um, so yeah I feel lucky that I'm able to share these stories yeah I also think when you when you understand how massive the universe is. Your dad helped us on one of our episodes, really understand how microscopic we all are. There is a humility that comes with that, where you realize whatever you're dealing with means really nothing. Like in the grand scope of things, like we are, we're like not even specks of sand. We're smaller, like millions and millions of millions of small, like we're just nothing. And so when you can realize there's a bigger world out there, um, that kind of just humility just simplifies things a little bit. It does. But I will say that there's two sides to that also, because again, having grown up in the Chopra household, um, I, yes, um, we realize like we are just a speck of dust in this infinite universe and that gives perspective. But I think it's really important not to underestimate the actually um, anxiety, overwhelming feelings, like the emotions um, and the physical that comes with that from any experience. And so, and we know that with children as well, but also adults, mm -hmm. like when you're mired in a, any um, anxious situation, you know, it's not like you can 
intellectualize I'm a speck of dust in this infinite universe but at yeah. that moment that's not really going to help and so I think it is really important that we're also looking at the tools the very practical tools that can help people heal um, on an individual basis as well really great point I always try to have the people around me rem- remind me of that in my moments of need because I say like, whatever you're dealing with right now, right now, it's like the number one problem. Oh my God, it's the worst thing that could ever happen. By tomorrow, some solutions will have shown up. Some You'll be moving forward, right? Like my mom was diagnosed with stage four brain cancer. It's like, it's the holy shit moment. It's the worst. And then within like two days, now you're trying to find the right doctor. Then you have surgery. Then you start therapies. Like things start to, you know, move forward. And it's like, you're not in that same situation. You were whatever situation you're in right now, isn't going to be the same every single day. There's going to be some kind of progress. I feel like that you can look forward to, to release yourself of some of the pain you're carrying in that moment. It's like, it's a knowing that this isn't forever, whatever this moment is. And again, absolutely, because you just described like kind of one of the most traumatic events you can imagine, right? Yeah. So um, in that moment, you know, it's real, like that fear and that raw fear um, is very real. Now, hopefully with the kind of techniques that we're talking about, everything from taking a simple breath to maybe if you have a meditation practice helps you self-regulate how we started to then come to a place, okay, the fight, flight, panic mode, which is totally normal and natural because your body is going to go there in any case. You can't stop that. Yep. But once you can start regulating, then you can start making um, intentions, decisions, choices to kind of move forward. Um, and not, And as you move forward, it's going to be painful. I mean, you know that from your own experience as well. Mm-hmm. But it's like, okay, how can I be present in this moment, in this time that I have with her, um, be present, you know, in her um, journey, but also, um, you know, find ways to take care of myself. Because, you know, if you don't do that, um, then we as individuals suffer as well. So, yeah, I think that's what I'm, I kind of mean, I guess, I guess it is finding a way to self-regulate with that humility in place, right. With understanding that today isn't going to be the same as tomorrow. Um, and, and, you know, like if I had stayed in that energy space the entire time, maybe we wouldn't have gotten five years with my mom, but I shifted at some point and yes, it takes a minute. It takes like a lot of minutes. Um, you know, you shift into hope and potential rather than thinking of the worst case scenario. Um, and, and that helps the, the journey go a lot easier. It doesn't mean it's, it is easy because it was excruciating in so many ways, but I know that it alleviated a lot of the pain, um, to, to, to shift mindsets into, into more positive spaces. And probably, uh, and I'm speculating here, but it probably also helps to feel connected in those moments and have those moments because that's what you carry with you afterwards as well, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, because, you know, we're all here, as my dad says, for a limited time and who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And so even in, in, in situations like what you faced with your mom, like just having that time, like you said, five years, but, you know, there must have been just these magical moments along the way, um, which you get to carry with you. Absolutely. And I think that that practice is, you know, I'm safe. I felt that in my feet that felt so good. And I can imagine doing that outside on the grass, how that would feel. Yeah, no, And I, you know, that's an interesting one because it was like during the pandemic when everything started and, you know, all our kids had been sent home and there was so much uncertainty and fear. And I felt like, um, you know, it was something I just felt like, oh, my God, here we have the earth beneath beneath us. Like when everything else feels totally unsafe and crazy and we don't know what's going to happen, like we can breathe and feel the earth beneath us. Um, so. Um, yeah, I hope I find that that grounding exercise helps as well. I love it. What about explain to everybody why a connection to nature is important? 
Yeah. So, you know, and again, all you sometimes many of us live in urban environments and we feel like we don't have a connection to nature. So what I recommend, first of all, a connection to nature, um, you know, actually has physical benefits to us. You know, when we feel the grass beneath us, when we breathe the air, when we actually sleep um, with the biological rhythms, there are many healing benefits just physically and physiologically to our body. Um, And, you know, with kids, again, because I do so much work with kids, when we do some exercises, um, as adults, we can experience things. So like, just go outside in your neighborhood and take a mindful walk and notice new things as you are out there and kind of use all your senses. So, you know, and that's in nature, we sense this, like the smells of the, you know, universe around us, um, the taste of the air, how it feels on our skin, the all the colors that we see, the sounds of nature. So we can really, when we're out, we can kind of immerse ourselves physically and physiologically um, in different environments. But I was starting with like when we're in urban environments, even you can go outside and you can just look up at the sky. Like even in Manhattan, in like the busiest of a city, you can go up and just kind of sense the infinity of space. Um, and, you know, that's why I like that I am, like feeling that space above. And that, as you said, also starts to give us a sense of perspective or from the minute to the infinite. And I think what nature allows us to do is kind of feel part of something that's larger than us, um, not just earth, but even the infinity of space. So yeah, I'm a big, big believer um, in spending time in nature, but even in 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 urban areas, finding ways, you know, to go to a park, to just kind of find whatever the tree is or the flowers or just the sky above. Yeah, I love it. I've always loved nature. I didn't know I, my parents loved it too. So I, I was like, it's probably a product of them and seeing them and how much they appreciated flowers and trees. But I am just if I could just be outside and live outside at all times, I would be the happiest person with animals. I need lots of animals too. <laughs> well, and that's why in, in this book, um, I used the rose, which was the traditional um, flower that Buddha kind of held in this uh, silent talk. But, you know, that's what the rose represents. It really is everything from the seed um, to the actual rose to the way that it's used. Um, and the rose has the scent, the smells. Um, It has that emotional um, connection with love, Um, like just, again, any object, but nature itself always brings out um, so much beauty. Yes, it does. Uh, Kelsey, Pooja, any questions you want to throw in? I, you know, like, I'm curious, besides going out and like you're saying, like, being aware of the air, like smelling the flowers or doing that sort of things. Are there any things that you do daily in nature to like, if you're like really about to pop off and you're like super, super overwhelmed, like, is there one thing, like if you have two seconds, like, I don't know, go hug a tree or like (laughs) something like that, that we can do that just like kind of brings us back down. Yeah. So I will hear a couple things. Um, One is I don't think you even need to go out in nature. Like I think just taking the breaths that we did earlier in in this segment. Um, So taking one breath, taking two breaths, like we did with the fingers, taking three breaths like we did with those um, feeling grounded. I am here and I am. I am just taking a breath is great. But what I do do, um, because I spend a lot of time either writing on my computer or doing podcasts and things like this. I um, go uh, either I walk my dog. um, So, you know, go go for a walk with um, outside. um, But I don't take my devices with me. Mm. So really disconnect. So I think we um, or if you're going for just a walk outside, again, disconnect, because so many of us now go with our AirPods we're listening to a podcast or we're going for a run with the music. Um, We don't, um, we don't really disconnect or have silence. And so that's my biggest piece of advice is if you're going outside, actually be outside, like be with nature. Don't kind of be trying to do 15 other things at the same time and don't overstimulate yourself um, continually. And I say that even 
for when people do yoga, you know, um, here in LA, like you can go to any type of yoga class, including hip hop yoga and, you know, any, any kind of music theme that you want, but I'm a big believer in do quiet yoga. Um, so, you know, really just feel connected to your body. So for me, that's the main thing is really disconnect from all the stimulation. I love that. Cause I feel like I do my walks, but I always have my music blasting <laughs> and I will overstimulate myself. Sometimes it helps because I'm like very connected with music, but sometimes it definitely doesn't help. So I'm going to start doing it without. I love that. Thank yeah. You. And by the way, one other thing, cause we brought up carpool line earlier, like I think similarly in our cars, mm. we, whenever we're driving, we have music or we have, you know, we're listening to our favorite podcasts like this yeah. one, all of which I do and I recommend, but sometimes maybe just have a quiet drive um, and just kind of be as you're driving. I love my quiet drives. I think it's, it's everything has its moment. So if, if Kelsey, you're in that pop-off moment or you're in that overstimulated moment, it's what I was saying earlier, when the kettle's running hot, don't keep adding to it. Right. Don't keep, right. keep, you know, doubling down release, go do something that's going to release, whether it's the, the few exercises we just did, or, you know, taking a walk in nature or hugging Winchenza. You have Winnie, my little poodle right next I to know. you. And so um, that's always a good release as well. Malika, so many great tips. I am so grateful for my new breathing technique. This is going to be my totally new jam. And then the, the grounding is really special. I liked that as well. So um, friends, the book is called Buddha and the Rose. Here it is. And uh, it's available wherever books are sold, right? Yep. It's yes. available as of today everywhere. So I'm excited. Thank you. Great, great gift um, for the youngins in your life. And you as the adult, as you're reading, it will benefit too. So um, it's always nice to have a reminder of, you know, how important it is to be connected to, uh, to nature and to yourself. Yeah. Thank so, you so much. You. Always a pleasure to talk to you and also learn from you as well. So really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Well, that was really, really nice and super full of great tips. I love the finger breathing. I'm going to do that all the time. Me too. What a good just like stop and check. And honestly, her telling me not to overstimulate myself too. I needed to hear that. I think that we're so quick to you know, yeah, music or podcasts or this or that. And it's like, really, sometimes you just need the silence and you could do your, your finger breathing in silence. Like, you know, there's just so many good, good ways to kind of bring it back down. And I think that it was a good reminder for sure. Yeah. That's why I, I, I'm like, I learned this at some point when my mom was sick that I would just like, try to keep forcing, pushing her. Yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, the kettle's hot. I got to just stop. I got to stop five minutes, just do nothing. And it really made such a huge difference. Um, you know, we can all forget, but if you become habitual around these like techniques and tools, then, you know, you make them a habit. It'll be your new habit rather than, you know, doing the old way that isn't working. New, what is it? New synapse or new um, little pathways. New in habits, our brain. new behaviors, new results, something like that. It's true though. I love it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, great, great tips. I'm very excited to go into the world with my, my finger breathing. Me too. I also and liked, I hope you guys are too. I was just going to say, I liked what she was saying about the, um, when you were talking about how Deepak tell, told us that we're just a, like we are a spec. I like the other side of it too, you know? Yeah. And, and it was funny. Well, she's Cause like, you don't want to deny someone their pain. And I wasn't trying to say that. And I'm glad that she added that in so that no one was left thinking that. Um, It's just, there is a a humbling that comes Mm -hmm. when you're like, oh my gosh, we're making mountains out of molehills sometimes, not with big things like cancer or whatever. I mean, I'm not saying that, but um, you know, what's a massive thing in your life today won't necessarily be tomorrow. Right. Right. So it's good. But I like the perspective of both, you know? I like the, I like the two sides of it. It's like, don't deny that, feel your feelings, but also (laughs) then we move on. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, we always have to put one foot in front of the other, or we're going to just go down in the quicksand. True. So, all right, friends. Well, great, uh, 
great day. Hope you go into your day with your new techniques and you start applying them. The key is to start applying them right away and then keep doing it every day. This mm -hmm. way it becomes a habit and you'll have it really kind of, you know, I always talk about the bicep. Like if you don't do the bicep curls, bicep isn't going to get built. So do your bicep curls with your, you know, finger breathing or whichever one resonated with you and you like the most so that you can start uh, applying it and then keep growing. So um, in the meantime, thanks for being with us on this journey to getting better. And we'll be back with you tomorrow. In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices and be present. This podcast and all related content published or distributed by or on behalf of Maria Menunos or mariamenunos.com is for informational purposes only and may include information that is general in nature and that is not specific to you. Any information or opinions expressed or contained herein are not intended to serve as or replace medical advice, nor to diagnose, prescribe, or treat any disease, condition, illness, or injury, and you should consult the healthcare professional of your choice regarding all matters concerning your health, including before beginning any exercise, weight loss, or healthcare program. If you have or suspect you may have a healthcare emergency, please contact a qualified healthcare professional for treatment. Any information or opinions provided by a guest expert or host featured within website or on company's podcast are their own, not those of Maria Menounos or the company. Accordingly, Maria Menounos and the company cannot be responsible for any results or consequences or actions you may take based on information or opinions.